say or how much they they mock. Um, he is returning, just like he said. Yeah. Uh, let's turn in our Bibles this morning, if we would, to Matthew chapter twenty-four. Matthew chapter twenty-four. I am, enjoy <clears throat> our Sunday school lessons we've been having on Sunday morning and. And we go through prayer. Love the subject of prayer, and uh, I enjoy how uh, the showers divvies up the verses in the morning. And uh, I did that back on the field with the people that we had, and so I would like to do that again this morning and and uh, give up the verses we're going to look at. <clears throat> find everything here. I started thinking about this subject, and uh, when. Brother Dunn and his wife sang uh, John's vision, the song, and I asked him for a copy, and he couldn't find one, so he talked, typed one out for me, and I appreciate that. And uh, the visions you see will be hard. The bride must prepare for the night to punish the evil of man and ask us to watch and to pray. All of us will pay for their sin, and peace will replace all the strife. And uh, John's vision, and... Uh, uh, it will come true. Amen. <clears throat> so if I could ask uh, Brother Phil, would you, can you, can you this morning, okay? I understand. Uh, we'll have uh, Kayla, would you do Titus 2, verse 13? Titus 2, 13. Uh, Sister Shirley, could you do Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 4? John 14, verse 1 through 4. Uh, Sister Monica, would you please do Acts chapter 1, verse 11? Uh, Brother Don, could you do 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21? Uh, Sister Don, could you please do Isaiah 8, 20? Isaiah 8, 20. Uh, my daughter Natasha, could you do Deuteronomy 18, verse 22? <clears throat> Uh, Brother Josiah, would you do please 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9 and 10? 1 Corinthians 13, 9 and 10. Sister Beverly, could you do 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 4? 2 Peter 3, verse 3 through 4. Uh, my wife, uh, could you do Psalm 90, verse 12? And then... Uh, Uh, the grace, Brother Gray, could you do please, I have one more here, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. And I know there's a few that don't, still don't have any verses, but um, I have other verses. I didn't write the other ones down, so. Amen. <clears throat> All right, we'll just leave it at that for now. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dearly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for this time to open the Word of God. And uh, an exciting subject, Lord, uh, to looking at the, the return of Christ. And uh, I pray that you would uh, remind us of some things and, Lord, see some things that we have forgotten and those things that we need to be reminded of. We love you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for your people. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we've had it, I was talking, I think, with Brother Dunn about it uh, a few days ago, even about the explosion of knowledge that we have in our day, and uh, uh, over, just over the last 150 years, uh, how much knowledge has increased. I just think about the fastest, uh, the fastest form of transport for up until recently was the horse. And uh, now we're, we go uh, hundreds of miles per hour. Uh, technology, just the rapid pace of technology and uh, computer power and scientific discoveries and all these things and medical breakthroughs and and uh, uh, just uh, things opening up and finding DNA and what that has done for the medical field. And also when you think about the to and fro in the earth, going to and fro and uh, uh, just imagine what used to take, you know, a couple of months or more to get over the Atlantic. Uh, we can do it in eight hours uh, by plane. It's just it's mind-boggling uh, how fast uh, we can uh, travel this, this, this globe of ours. 
But I would like to uh, look at the return of Christ and uh, look at why um, we need to study prophecy. I want to look at those questions in regards to that. But we look in Matthew 24, it is, in verse 35 through 42. Uh, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Uh, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When I was reading that, I was thinking of when it talked about Noah and said that their thoughts were only evil continually. I believe we're there. Amen. We're there. Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. And I want us to study for a few moments the, the last days. And uh, uh, we know things that are happening because Bible prophecy tells us. Amen. The Bible helps us to discern the signs of the time. You remember Jesus talking to the religious crowd, the Pharisees, and, and says, you, you, you're not even aware of the signs of the time that you're living in. Uh, your Messiah is standing right in front of you. You don't even know that it's even happening. And uh, we can be that way uh, as well when it comes to the end times. And some Christians are. And uh, But we are truly living during an, an exciting time of history. Uh, I, In so many ways, I'm glad that we're at this end than to be where the disciples were. To where they had Christ to see him ascend up into heaven. And uh, had him and then he left. And uh, where when we see him, we should never be departed again. Amen. Uh, and that's that's exciting. Um, we're at the end when the last final chapters are being played out. Uh, one person said it this way. Uh, one preacher he said, "More Bible prophecy has been fulfilled in the past hundred years than in the last nineteen hundred years combined." And I believe that to be true. The fundamental, the, the return of Christ is a fundamental doctrine of the Word of God, isn't it? And uh, we can see in, in Titus, uh, uh, Caitlin, could you read Titus for us, chapter 2, verse 13? Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope. Looking for His return. He's, he's going to do just what He said. Amen. And uh, 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 Miss Shirley, would you, uh, Sister Shirley, would you please read uh, Gospel John 14, verse 1 through 4? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Amen. We know why. Because he told us. Amen. And uh, it's a promise. Uh, Acts 111. Uh, Sister Monica, would you please read that for us? Which also said, You men of Galilee, one standing gazing up into heaven, this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Isn't that exciting? I've, I've walked... Uh, and across Israel, I've been there a number of times. Uh, you, most of you know my sister Nikki, and uh, she married somebody from Palestine, uh, from Bethlehem. And so I've been there to see family in the past and things like that. But I've gone, you leave old Jerusalem, you go down into the valley, Valley of Kidron is right there on the uh, right <laughs> side of the city. And you go up the other side, and it's the Mount of Olives. And I have gone up there and walked it and all those things. and. I walked it because I was too cheap to pay for a taxi, amen. But uh, walked in the very places that probably David and, and Jesus walked with his disciples. But it was there on the Mount of Olives where he ascended up into heaven. 
And it said the same Jesus shall come in like manner. I believe where he took off, that square foot of property where he took, I believe that's where his toes going to step down. Amen. It's where it's going to come exactly just like he said. And uh, what the blessed hope uh, that we have as Christian and his glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, there's much prophecy concerning the Lord's return. Concerning prophecies in general, one third of our Bible is prophetic. One third of it. Uh, there are things that, when we look at prophecy, there are things that govern uh, true prophecy. Uh, true prophecy uh, isn't hocus pocus. Uh, it isn't uh, uh, fortune telling. Uh, the only source of true prophecy is the word of God. Amen. It's not somebody, you look up in, in your, in, on YouTube or you see all these prophets and these apostles that come and telling what the immediate future is going to uh, hold for us. And that's, that's baloney. Amen. Uh, our word of God, when it was started and finished, there's nothing you add to it. Amen. Uh, it's all there for us. And um, uh, so it all comes from the word of God. Prophecy uh, is, I once said it this way, I thought it was interesting. He said, prophecy is history recorded by God before it happens. It is history recorded by God before it happens. Truth prophecy is 100% accurate. Amen. The prophets, prophets so-called today, they're always getting it wrong. But people are still following them. They make some excuse or whatever. And a lot of the prophets during during the time of Trump was in, they were all prophesying that Trump is going to get in for a second term. Didn't by some rule, well known ones. Didn't happen. I wonder if we should they should carry out the Old Testament way of doing that. Amen. <laughs> We'd have fewer prophets. But uh, look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 121. Uh, Brother Dunn, could you read that for us, please? For the prophecy came not. Amen. They were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by their own agenda or by other people. They were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's how it, it worked. And, uh, and it's exactly the way it is. What governs true prophecy? Uh, it must line up with the Bible. Uh, uh, Sister Dunn, could you read Isaiah 8, 24, please? To the law. Amen. Amen. What it said, what they said had to line up with the word of God. If it didn't, there's no light in them. And uh, for the life of me, I don't know why the ones that keep following the so-called prophets today. It must line up with the Bible. It must come to pass. Uh, Deuteronomy 18.22. Uh, my daughter, Natasha, would you read that for us? Deuteronomy 18.22. It must come to pass. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath, hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Mm. And uh, we know the Old Testament they had a way of dealing with that. Now when you look at it, true prophecy, it must line up with the scriptures. It must come to pass according to the, the law of the Old Testament. Uh, it must point, also we see in the New Testament, it must point to the Lord Jesus Christ true prophecy. It must point to him. If we take our, our Bibles this morning and look in 1 John, we'd all turn over, if you would, to 1 John <clears throat> chapter 4. <clears throat> true prophecy must point us to the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 4, verse 1 through 3, it said, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't believe it. Don't believe every spirit, but try the spirits, test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets, if you got false prophets, you have false prophecies, amen? Many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now how we do test the spirits, try the spirits. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this, and this is that spirit of Antichrist whereby ye have heard 
that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. If the Apostle John wrote this some 2,000 years ago, how much more so is it today? Amen. The spirit of Antichrist. Cain ended on that. I love the next verse. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, amen. And uh, it should point us to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, prophecy. Uh, if, it's, if it's not of God, it's, it's going to point you other places. Now, we know there's no new prophecy today. Amen. Uh, we know that. The Bible teaches that. Uh, Brother Josiah, would you read uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 and 10? For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Amen. So prophesying was that in part. And that which is perfect, I believe, is the word of God. Amen. Then those things in part would be gone. And uh, we have the word of God because it's the complete word of God. We don't need any prophesying. Amen. Uh, it's all here right in our hand. We, we don't have to uh, guess per se anymore. Now, when you mention the subject about the return of Christ and uh, Hollywood likes to make their movies, the apocalypse and all these things and the uh, planets falling out of the sky and all these things. And it is portrayed as something a lot of doom and gloom. When you talk about the end times, the second coming of Christ, the rapture, uh, the world, uh, all these things falling apart. It all depends on what side of the fence you're on. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. For the child of God, it's not doom and gloom. Right. Uh, this world is not our home. Uh, our bank isn't our riches. Amen. Uh, uh, it's just, uh, it's, we're just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Amen. And so these things, uh, we talk about the return of Christ is not doom and gloom. It all depends on what side of the fence you're on. You can, I was talking with uh, Brother Sowers earlier about this and, and how that uh, uh, you have these uh, people that are that are lost without Jesus Christ and they're, and they're living their life now and seeing the things that are coming upon this earth. I can only imagine. No wonder depression is, is growing like it is with all the things that they're seeing. And God says the hearts of men filling them for fear of those things that are coming upon the earth. Uh, uh, there's more people on antidepressants today than ever before. And, uh, uh, and uh, I don't know how they make it through a day. And uh, uh, see, the, everything they're holding on for security is, is questionable whether it's going to be there tomorrow. And uh, they're talking about the food and, and, and all the plagues coming and all this. If you're on that side of the fence, yes, this is something. I don't want to hear about those kind of things. It's like the one Japanese man that got saved there in our, uh, our church there in Czech Republic. And uh, he said he was a little boy. This missionary in Tokyo gave him a track. And it, it said something about hell on the front of it. And he brought it to her mom. And mom just, just, just said, get it out of here. Throw it away. I don't want to see that. And uh, it's unimaginable when you think about what's coming to this earth. Uh, but for a child of God, it's something completely different. Um, we see now we're on both sides of, of America. We're faced with these tropical storms. Uh, one hitting, they said, it could have happened a couple of days on the East Coast. And then we have this one hitting that Pastor was talking about in California. Uh, I said, it's been years and years since such a storm. It's such a rare thing. And uh, all these things that we're seeing upon the earth. Um, but we're about ready to, be, to check out of here. Amen. The Lord's return. The rapture, the second coming. Listening for the trumpet. I love that song. Or the one we say, the trumpet of the Lord shall si sound and time shall be no more. You know, during the Old Testament time, that trumpet was used in the, amongst the children of Israel to signal if they were to be brought together as a, as a congregation. They would, they would do that sound of a trumpet and they'd know whether it was time to go forth to battle or if it was a calling of assembly. The trumpet was what they listened to. And uh, we listened to quite a, kind of a different trumpet, amen. But one day it will sound and uh, I can't wait for that. Um, as the verse we just said in Titus 2 verse 13, looking for that blessed hope. Now look with me, when you went to 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, Sister Beverly, could you read that for us? Second Peter three, verse three through four. Excuse 
scoffers, and the last days scoffers shall come. And the last days, and uh, they most certainly are here, scoffing all these things that we're talking about. Uh, they don't want to hear it. Um, you talk about the end times, and the majority of people, including Christians, would just laugh it off. I, I, we were in the time that we were missionaries. We were back about four different times uh, to go to churches and to report uh, of what was happening there in our work and ministry. And uh, one of the times we were out, uh, I, I was just overwhelmed with the sense and, and, and the, the feeling of you know the Lord's return, and God was really just talking to me in my heart about this thing and. And something very dear to me. And I was just so excited about the Lord. It could be today. And um, and I was I was start talking with the pastors I was with, and I would start talking about the Lord's return. And in almost in every case, it was shot down, we call it. And they didn't want to talk about it. And it was it was put away, yeah, but we should live like it's gonna be another two hundred years before he comes. And uh, it was just like a dead subject that just said it, it I couldn't believe it. It got to where that I, I didn't talk about that subject with the pastor because it didn't want to be talked about. It really just, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, and so uh, it's not for many that don't want to talk about it. Uh, but we live in a day where there are many that do not fear God and are God-haters and are scoffers. And uh, they love to ridicule and make fun of everything that's holy and that's decent. And uh, we're living in that day. Uh, you go to scoffers uh, looking and listen to what different ones say. Uh, you'd have to go any further than go to celebrities, uh, celebrities that uh, mockingly uh, say things about God. And uh, I was just read a few of these were from a long time ago, and they're many times, thousand times worse today. But I, I wrote down here <clears throat> what John Lennon said about Christianity. He said, and of course, you know, he was brutally murdered, but he said, Christianity will end, it will disappear. I do not have to argue about that, I'm certain. Jesus was okay, but his subjects were too simple. Today we are more famous than him. He said in 1966, of course, they're part of the Beatles. Uh, uh, it will end and it will disappear. And he was talking about his own disappearance. Marilyn Monroe. It said that uh, a spirit of God led a preacher uh, to go to witness to her. And uh, after hearing what the preacher had to say, she said this. She says, I don't need your Jesus. And she was, uh, she was found dead in her bedroom about a, a week later. Uh, the vocalist, uh, well-known hard rock, uh, group ACDC uh, vocalist back in 1979 he mockingly he sang his song he says don't stop me I'm going down all the way down the highway to hell and uh, uh, you get on every now and again that, that I don't want and I don't watch them but every now and you hear these uh, groups get together where they have these talk shows and, and uh, people just hate God you could talk about any other subject and they would be fine with it, except for about God and Jesus Christ. You find that when you go out on the roads and you hand out literature and, and talk to people. And, and uh, Peter, the pastor now there in uh, Czech Republic, he was amazed. He says, you know, I've had people come up and tell me uh, where to go and, tell me and do these things. For me. He was all new to that. I said, yes, yeah. they hate God. And uh, I said, we could literally be doing anything else and they'd be fine with it. It shows you how of a spiritual nature it is. <clears throat> so why should we be studying prophecy? Well, I believe we should study prophecy because it helps us to discern and understand the signs of the times. Uh, that's number one. We're not in the dark, amen? It helps Christians uh, make sure what's uh, going on in the world. And, uh, and Doug catches things, Doug catches off guard. Uh, it's very fascinating to see all the signs that are being fulfilled uh, in our world today and before our very eyes. If, go back to Matthew. We were in Matthew 24. 
Go to Matthew 24 again and uh, look at verse 3 uh, through 8. Matthew 24, verse 3 through 8. <clears throat> It says, and he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Got a lot of deception up there. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, the anointed one, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Aren't we there? Yes. They say, at any given, at right now, there's like over 40 major conflicts going on in the world as we speak. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes, in diverse places. All these, all these are the beginnings of sorrow. The beginnings of sorrow. Jesus gave a list of signs, and then he ends it with the word all. It says there, it's very interesting, you look up that word, it says all these are the beginnings of sorrows. You look up that word sorrows, it says birthing pains. Birth pains. And uh, as the birth pains of the womb become more frequent and intense, as the time of delivery grows, uh, it gets more and more tense. It's, and that, God said that that's the way it is when, before he comes. Things are going to get more frequent, more tense uh, before he comes. And uh, we're seeing that. Uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to wait for any more prophecy to be fulfilled. It's already fulfilled. Amen. And uh, the things we see with the weather and the things we see, we're, 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 reading, <laughs> we're reading prophecy all around us. And, uh, and so uh, Christ's return, as we return, things drop closer, the signs of the time become more and more frequent and more intense. And we're seeing it today. Uh, Luke 21 and 28 says, when th these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads for your redemption Draw of nigh. It's close. Even nigh at the door. So we study because we, we, we need to uh, uh, know what's happening around us. That's why we study uh, Bible prophecy to understand the signs of the time. And I would say correctly, of course. And, uh, but we also say that we study prophecy because it uh, produces holiness. Really, it does. It's supposed to. Jesus is coming back. We have to give an account of the talents that we've been given. Amen. What have we done with what God has given us? We used it upon our own lust or we used it for His glory. It causes the Christian to reevaluate the things in our life like what is really re important. Uh, we could say by looking at prophecy, it causes a person to uh, have a close look, a close look at ourselves. Look at uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 and 14. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10 and 14. Uh, Sister Gray, could you read that for us please? Second Peter 3 Verse 10 through 14.
Amen. Uh, seeing that he's looking for such things, be diligent that you might be found in him being in peace without spot. And blame, I would call that holiness. Amen. It all said, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation? We study prophecy because it, it produces holiness and uh, gets to consider our time and, and where we're at and what we need to do in our lives and, and things around us as well. Uh, uh, my wife, uh, Rachel, could you read Psalms for us, 90 verse 12? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Number our days. <laughs> number our days. Get us to think about how short things are. A short life is, amen. Is as a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanished away. And what time that we do have, what are we doing with that time? We can't buy any more. You know, Steve Jobs, when he died, he had money, money lots of it. Founder of Apple. And uh, he said one thing at a deathbed. He says, it's amazing that uh, with all my wealth and all this, that, that money does not mean anything to me. You know, with all the money he had, he couldn't purchase any more time. He's still dying. And in our lives, we, we, if God tarries his coming, we also... Uh, one day we'll die. And what are we? What are we done with the time that we have? Hope we never hear the dreaded words of a doctor, where he said you have only so much time to live. All of a sudden, all the foolishness goes out the window, doesn't it? And you're making every minute count. And God wants us to do that now. It teaches, reminds us, we ain't got forever. <coughs> Produces holiness. Thirdly, prophecy. Comforts the saved. Amen. Comforts the saved. Uh, Brother Greg, would you please read 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 through 18. Well, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the, in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Yeah. Comfort one another. <laughs> this isn't all there, there is. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. This life that we're in is not all there is. And uh, He's coming uh, for me. Uh, that's why he says in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. Great things are coming. Having prophecy fulfilled all around us, it, it tells, tells us he's on the way. Get ready. Pack your bags. Can't take them, but you can pack them, amen. <laughs> Brings comfort in a twinkling of an eye. Twinkles pretty fast. One twinkle here, next moment we're there. Walking around. Amen. Can only imagine. Prophecy helps Christians get a burden for the lost. Knowing what's coming should cause us to want to want as many as we can to, to escape hell. It should make us to be do all that we can. To tell the lost of what's coming. Yeah. And they don't have to go that way. Jesus Christ came that they might go to heaven. That all that they're facing in this world is bad. What's coming is bad. But it still does not compare to what hell is. Cannot be compared to what's coming. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, 
Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We tell them what's coming. You know what? I find that more and more, I find that uh, those that call themselves preachers of God don't preach on hell anymore. Why? Because they're in the entertaining business. And oh, hell, that's so horrible subject. Why? I don't want to offend anybody. I'm sure on judgment day, they're going to wish that somebody had offended them. Amen. 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 They can't see. They can't hear the flames, but we're to do it for them. Amen. And warn them. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. As believers, we are called fishers of men. We're called ambassadors for Christ to the lost and dying world. It's in our song, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. That's what prophecy, the study of prophecy does, is realize the time is short. And lastly, as we study prophecy, it reminds us of God's power and authority of scriptures. As we await the Lord's coming, His second coming, we look at the first coming for confirmation, we can, that the second coming will happen. And uh, there were hundreds of Old Testament prophecies relating to the first coming of Christ. And things that would happen during his ministry. And each were fulfilled exactly to the letter. Just like the Old Testament prophets prophesied. This coming will also, because, will also happen exactly like he says. Every single prophecy will happen. Look with me if you would in Mark uh, chapter 15. One for example, Mark uh, 15. Mark 15, verse 26. I got the white one here. Mark 15, verse 26. This was dealing with his death. And it says in verse 26, he's hanging on the cross. It said the, subscri uh, the uh, subscription of the accusation was written over uh, him, the, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Uh, look at Luke uh, chapter 4. This happened many times, and as John said, could not, could not write all of them, or the world could not contain the books of those things. But Luke chapter 4, uh, verse 17 through 21. And there were delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of them all, all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. It had been prophesied hundreds of years before. But everything that was laid out and on in other places, exactly like he said. One mathematician said it this way. Um, I believe talking with Brother Don, he, he likes mathematics. And uh, uh, <clears throat> one mathematician said that he calculated the possible, if he calculated the possibility of all the prophecies concerning Christ, first coming, to, to uh, just happen by chance. He said, that, he said the figure is one chance in 87 with 93 zeros behind it. Of that happening every single one to the detail. 87 with 93 zeros behind it happened exactly. It wasn't by chance. God Almighty knew. He knows all things. And uh, He said before it, every single one happened. God's word is sure and true. And uh, prophecy proves it. Amen. And other things as well. So we study prophecy because it helps us to understand. The signs around this, it helps us to re-examine ourselves where we stand with Christ. It comforts the saved. It helps us to get a burden for the lost. And it reveals God's power. Uh, His word is sure. Now I want to read one thing and we'll be dismissed. If you would, look with me in 1 Thessalonians. And I would like for us to read this. Kind of a cap to this study this morning. 
of why we look at prophecy, and I just want to end it with prophecy. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I would like for us to re read this together. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we'll read verse 1 down to verse 11, and then we'll be finished. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 11, I'd like for us to read it together. <clears throat> It says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these comforting words and thank you lord that your return is nigh and i pray that you be ready we love you in jesus name amen